Hey guys, I'm Lucas, welcome to Kano's episode 24. I give you a quick overview about the upcoming Atlas V and Vega rocket launches. Vega is the European launch system which consists of three solid and one liquid fueled upper stage. Its payload is the LISA Pathfinder mission, which I will cover in more detail later on. The other rocket is the United Launch Alliance Atlas V, which has many configurations and will launch in its smallest 4 or 1 setup. It has no strap on booster, one engine on the upper stage and a 4 meter wide fairing. The payload is Orbital ATK's Cygnus spacecraft, which destination is the International Space Station. The launch is scheduled for December 3rd and will take place at Cape Canaveral, Florida at 5.55 pm local time. The launch window is immediate, which means it can't be shifted further back on the same day, because it has to launch when the launch site rotates into the ISS orbital plane at an inclination of roughly 52 degrees. The Vega launch was postponed but will occur in Peru, French Guiana. Since it will lift off at night at around 1 am local time, the actual launch day is the day before in the US. The rocket will head for such an elliptic equatorial parking orbit, with an apoapsis pointing at the sun. This has a very special reason because the LISA Pathfinder spacecraft, which by the way stands for Laser Interferometer Space Antenna, will head for the Lagrange Point 1, which lies roughly 1.5 million kilometers away between Earth and our parent star. Craft put in or around this empty spot in space have the same orbital period our Earth has around the Sun, which leaves them hovering in front of it. I think I'll do a special about these points in future, but I'm not sure yet. The future evolved LISA or ELISA constellation will consist of three satellites, which will be separated by approximately 1 million kilometers and placed in the Lagrange point 3 of the Earth-Sun system. The whole purpose of this mission, which won't launch earlier than 2034, is to detect gravitational waves. These waves are not yet proven to exist, but are predicted by Einstein's theory of relativity. Such waves arise from objects which vary their gravitational pull, as if a star would turn its gravity on and off frequently. However, this is of course impossible and changes in gravity are difficult to observe. One event which could cause such waves are two massive objects spinning around each other. There are plenty of these, but you can imagine the effect on us is very very little due to the immense distance, so the instrumentation must be very precise. Using such a precise device is only possible in an absolute vibration and drag free environment, aka space. The satellites will stand absolutely still and measure the distance to each other constantly. To prove the existence of gravitational waves, the distance between the satellites has to change without the satellites to move relative to each other. Anyways. As mentioned, ELISA will not launch before 2034 and the LISA Pathfinder is sent to test some parts of it in a very interesting way. Inside the satellite will be two hovering cubes, completely shielded from the outside. The satellite will use very precise thrusters to keep itself centered around the cubes and to observe their relative movement to each other using so-called interferometers. These devices are similar to laser rangefinders but work a little differently. They use very clean laser light, which means the laser produces light of pretty much a single color, like green for example. While others appear clean too, there are hundreds of different green colors. And a single laser usually produces many of these at once. The cleaner a laser, the more expensive it is. And these can cost thousands of dollars. Having only a single green color, or one wavelength for that matter, one can use it to measure a relative speed more precisely. While regular rangefinders just measure the time it takes to bounce off an object and return, such interferometers use an effect called interference. Two beams of perfectly clean laser light can interfere with each other. This means they don't act like two individual waves going their ways, but more like a single one. If you now imagine the laser bouncing off an object, it can actually interfere with itself. Looking at the changing properties of the so-called interference pattern inside the interferometer, one can tell how the object is moving. It's really not so difficult, but probably takes more effort to describe it to really understand how it works and I could also do a special about it if there is enough interest, so feel free to ask for it. Okay, Vega will release its payload as mentioned in an elliptic orbit, from where Lisa will raise its apoapsis further until it leaves the Earth's sea of influence and will position itself in a large halo orbit around Lagrange Point 1. The halo orbit is chosen to avoid flying directly between Earth and the Sun, so no other experiments are affected by it. In the end, back to Atlas V and Cygnus. Once decoupled, it will find its way to the space station on its own. It is packed with almost 3.4 tons of cargo, from which one third are crew supplies like food for example. The Canadarm will help with docking and it will eventually reach the bottom docking port of the Unity module. 
That was KNews episode 24, covering Vega and Atlas V. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching. <laughs>